What's going on guys? Roma the Roamer here, here in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm at Starbucks right now. You guys can't see Starbucks. It's a beautiful day, by the way. I fucking love days like this. Fucking love it. Overcast, rainy. Took an ice bath this morning. I've been doing an ice bath every day. I don't know what degrees it is right now, but it was cold as fuck in that ice bath. That's how I prime myself each day. I get my physiology in state. I jump in that ice tub. I don't give a fuck how I feel in the morning. I jump in that ice tub, get myself going. Look, grind hard, well done, sir, and welcome to the freaking well show. So, I'm making this video because I haven't been doing many vlog type videos. I've been doing lots of interviews and tutorials and i just feel like fucking updating you guys on what the hell is going on because some of you there's one motherfucker on here that's been watching my shit from day one he's been watching me uh from the day i was living in my car all the way till now and i used to only put out videos like this so i'm gonna start putting videos out like this more right now my business model is it it really revolves around consignment i'm doing a lot of consignment and a big portion of that consignment is restrictedinventory.com. So what I'm what I'm doing every morning, I wake up and I bang out four hours of focused energy. So for four hours, I just I just fucking focus. Got my laptop here. I always keep this on me now. It's a uh, mic because I make I probably make you know three or four videos a day for my virtual assistants on on YouTube unlisted. So I, I make tutorial videos for them how to do this, how to reprice. XYZ. I'm also pimping out restrictedinventory.com. So for those of you that are just following this for the vlog, it's restrictedinventory.com is a service where I sell restricted inventory for other Amazon sellers. Uh, restricted inventory is inventory that they can't sell on Amazon. Amazon, for whatever reason, cut them off, said you can't sell this. Their account's not eligible for it. So I offer a service that allows them to sell restricted inventory. Big part of that though, is I have like 400 plus consignees now. I have 400 plus uh, clients. And part of the reason why I got into Amazon, selling on Amazon rather than uh, you know cutting lawns, I used to have a landscaping company. I wanted to get out of the service-based business and enter the product-based business, which I did. But now I'm entering the service-based business again because I have to provide reports for people. I have to let people know when their inventory got checked in, how much, how much sold. I have to pay people each month. I have to provide customer service. I, I actually, one of my listeners who used to help me pack books, her full-time job now is, well, not full-time, but instead of listing books, she doesn't list books anymore. She just handles my restrictedinventory.com emails. So it's getting my brain going in ways I didn't really have to think before because Amazon stripped us of the ability to create a brand and uh, to create um, or or to have to deal with customer service, which was nice. Fulfillment by Amazon, a service or FBA, which is what almost all Amazon sellers use. You ship your shit to Amazon. They handle everything else. They basically sell it for you. Now, I still do FBA, but I'm adding a whole other element to where I have customers now and I have to, you know, deal with customer service there. Um, and that's inevitable. No matter how I decided to scale my book business, I, I was going to go with more liquidation type deals where I would help. Uh, this is back earlier this year. Y'all saw me traveling around a lot. I was doing liquidation type deals and that requires customer service too, but you have much fewer clients. So what, however you scale a book business, you're going to have clients in one form or another. Your clients are going to be your sources. So wherever you're getting sources from, I like to think of resellers as drug dealers or the opposite of drug dealers. Drug dealers are going out, look, searching for people to sell to, but Amazon sellers don't have to worry about the sale because Amazon sellers, we're, we have all the data for the listings. We know that, that the book is going to sell. Like we have data that if we if we get the book, we know it's going to sell. Drug dealers have the opposite problem, where they have they have to get the product and then they have to find someone. They have to find a motherfucker to buy that shit too. So drug dealers are going out finding sources, selling them, and they have to like keep all that shit under the table. FBA sellers. I don't know why I'm comparing to drug dealers, but it just was on my mind. I, like I was thinking the other day, we're kind of blessed having FBA because 
FBA handles, you know, customer service, they handle shipping, they handle all that. But as you build your business, you're inevitably, inevitably going to add that customer service element to your sourcing side of your business. Do you understand that? So whether you're dealing with libraries, thrift stores, other resellers, whatever it is, students, you're going to have a customer service element. And that's what I'm dealing with. And so that's why the first four, I got this from my mentor, Caleb Roth. He recommended the book, uh, The One Thing. I got this idea from that book or this uh, philosophy, work four hours a day when your willpower is at its highest. So the first four hours of the day, those are your power hours. That's when your willpower is at its highest. As the day goes on, this is science, your willpower goes down over time. That shit goes down. It's like, it's like, it's a, it's a muscle. Your muscles get fatigued, but they get stronger over time. So I probably deplete half my willpower just by getting in that fucking ice bath first thing in the morning. But um, I'm still feeling good. So I've been up for two hours and my four hours are going to start as soon as I get in there. So if it's 933 when I get in there, which is early as hell for me, guys, you guys know that I wake up generally around 10 or 11. I've been getting to sleep early for a couple of reasons. This ties all, this whole video can also tie into my dance journey because the reason why I've been going to sleep early is I want to start going to the free classes they have in Nashville again. And the free classes start at like seven o'clock the free salsa classes. So I was going out at seven or I was, what I was doing was I was working till like nine or 10 and then I would go dancing from like 10 to 12 to one every single night. So I wouldn't, I wasn't getting to sleep till like two or three in the morning. So I was waking up, you know, 10, 11 o'clock sometimes. So I'm, I'm bringing back my, the time I go to sleep, my bedtime. Uh, it's the, it's called the circadian rhythm, something where you go to sleep when the sun goes down and you wake up when the sun rises. That's called your circadian rhythm. It's your natural sleep cycle. So I'm going back to the circadian rhythm, not because, not for health necessarily. It's more to focus, to get the most out of everything in life. I want to become a better dancer. And for me to become a better dancer, I can't just go out dancing. I have to get lessons. So the free lessons are at seven o'clock each night. So I'm going to start doing that again so I can wake up earlier, work, get all my work done for the day and then go dancing. And then I ought to leave dancing earlier to go to sleep, to wake up early the next day. So that's what's going on guys. Hope you enjoyed that short little video, little vlog update. Anyway, peace out family. Stay tuned. Some pretty cool content. Dope sales like the charge do, but selling's all about potential. And money speaks, then I'm the main act.